welcome this we are so happy that you're tuned in this evening to our bible study and we are coming to you from goshen power faith goshen and we are so delighted that you are tuned in to us listening as usual and uh, are ready with your Bibles and your notebooks and pen as we study the Word of God together. Remember that our senior pastors are Bishop and Reverend Charmaine Sutton and I am Pastor Carl Brand and I'm and I'll be doing the Bible study tonight. We are still looking at the subject, Does God Answer Prayer Every Time? All right? And so we're going to continue this evening. But before we do, let's pause for a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful that your presence is here with us for you have said in your words that you will never leave us nor will you forsake us and so we are confident that you are here thank you thank you thank you i thank you lord that I am your servant and Father I thank you that you have anointed me to teach your word and I thank you that as I open my mouth to share the word I thank you that the Holy Spirit will so use me thank you for thinking through my mind speaking through my lips i thank you lord that your words are still quick and powerful and sharper than any twigged sword piercing even to dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joint and the moral i want to thank you lord that you have given your people Ears to, ears to hear and you have given them an understanding heart so as we study your word this evening we ask Lord that your spirit would reveal the word to us open our understanding cause the light from your word to shine in our hearts and Lord we thank you that we'll all be edified we'll all Lord God leave at the end of Bible study being thankful that we did engage because Lord God we I've learned and we are diligent, Lord, and committed to put into practice that which we hear. So we thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right? So we are back with you. And I want to apologize that last week we weren't with you because of some personal challenges that I had. But we are back with you tonight and we are continuing our Bible study. The topic, Does God Answer Prayer Every Time? Now remember that I pointed out from the scripture that God doesn't answer prayer or answer all prayers. All right? He simply ignores some. 
Now Isaiah chapter 59 and verses 1 and 2 say, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor is ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sin have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Not that he cannot hear, but he chooses not to hear. All right? So God doesn't answer all prayer. However, one prayer that God does not ignore is a prayer that is prayed in faith. Remember that faith means to believe. All right? And let me emphasize to believe in scripture or Bible belief is not merely a mental understanding that something exists. It is rather a commitment to follow or act on what we know. Acting on God's word or doing what God, what his, his word says. In the book of John chapter 2 and verse 5, Mary, the mother of Jesus, said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. All right? In James chapter 1 and verse 22, the Bible says, But be doers, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46 says, But why do you call me Lord, Lord? And do not do the things which I say. Alright? So, we don't want to be just hearers of the word. We want to apply that word or the word that, which, that we receive. Now, Bishop David Oedipo says that faith is a living force drawn from the living word and produces and produces living proofs. Let me say that again. Faith is a living force. Faith is alive. It's dynamic. Drawn from the living word and produces living proofs. Faith is one of the most potent forces in the universe. Amen. You know, it is instructive to constantly bear in mind or do not forget that as a church we are named the power of faith. So if there is any church or group of Christians, Christian people, 
that need needs to be grounded and operate on a daily basis in faith it is us amen our name says it all the power of faith our name is a testament to what we stand for or what we are all about we are here to demonstrate or to show forth the power of faith. Amen. It must be said of us, Thou hast a name that thou livest. Now, one might ask, Is faith all that important yes 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 faith is extremely important children of god faith is one of our greatest resources in first corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13 the bible says and now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Love might be the greatest because God is love. First John chapter 4 verses 7 and 8 say, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God doesn't merely possess love. He is love, love personified. Amen. The fact that 1 Corinthians 13, 13 states, and now abides faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love, is an admi a admission, is an admission that the others are great too love might be the greatest but hope is great faith is great so we say that faith is one of our greatest resources as christians let me reiterate faith is one of our greatest resources cannot emphasize that too much amen let me also remind us that as children of god each one is given a measure of faith amen now you know what the bible says a measure it didn't say the measure romans chapter 12 verse 3 for I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to th uh, think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Each child of God was allotted an amount of faith when we got after we got saved you have faith as children of god amen a certain amount was given to you by god what each one does with his or her allotted measure or amount of faith 
is his or her choice. Now, we can choose to ignore our measure. We can choose to abandon our measure. Or we can choose to increase our measure. Now, children of God, don't ask God like the disciples did in Luke chapter 17 verse 5 to increase your faith. This is your responsibility, not God's. One of God's purposes for giving us a measure of faith is for you to work on your measure and increase your measure. Amen. Your measure needs to be increased. Amen. And how do you do that? The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. As you get in that word on a daily basis, that word gets into you and build your faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember I also said, told you, that faith also comes by hearing directly from God. As you get in God's presence, as we get in God's presence, sometimes God speaks a word directly to us. Just like he spoke to Abraham directly. He spoke to Moses. He spoke with David. God wants to speak with us. The Bible says, surely the Lord God does nothing, but he first reveals his secret to his servant, the prophet. Amen. And then it says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he'll show them his covenant. God wants to speak to his people. Amen. Now, sometimes Christians pray ignorant prayer or unbelief prayer. God simply ignores prayer that is prayed in ignorance or unbelief. God's main purpose, I think, for giving us the Bible, all 66 books written by 40 different authors over 1,500 years was for us to know what is inside the book and for it to guide us in every aspect of life including our prayer life we can continue to pray before we go off on a trip God be with me that's a prayer that is grounded in either ignorance or unbelief. Because God has said in his word. In the Old Testament and New Testament. That he will be with us. In fact he said in the New Testament. I will never leave you. Amen. So. If we pray God be with us. When God has said, I will never leave you, it's either we don't believe or we are ignorant of what he says. Every child of God each day, consciously or unconsciously, determines what happens to his or her measure of faith. Every child of God, every day, we determine that. Amen. Let us at this time believers, serious believers, in the face of challenges, 
make a commitment to increase our faith. Just like the, the church in Thessalonica. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 3 says, We are bound to thank God always for you brethren as it is meet because your faith groweth exceedingly. Hallelujah. There is no limit to how our faith can grow. Amen. Your faith groweth exceedingly. Now, why do we need to increase our faith? Why do we need to, to grow our faith? The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, it starts out with these three words. Now faith is. Brothers and sisters, saints, faith is. And it is now. Don't wait until you need faith to try and get faith. Build it now. Grow it now. Increase it now. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, faith is operating faith now. We are the power of faith ministry. Amen. How important is faith? As children of God, we need faith. We need faith for everything. Everything we do is about faith. As Christians, everything we do is about faith. Remember, faith is acting on God's word. Amen. Everything that we do is about faith. Because every transaction, every transaction with God is a result of his grace, his favor. But is realized through faith. Amen. It's realized through faith. So how important is faith? Number one. We can't be saved without faith. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourself it is the gift of God or by grace are you saved through faith so we need faith to be saved number two we can't we, uh, we can't Please God without faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. Impossible. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Impossible. The word impossible means impotent. Amen. Impotent or powerless or without strength to do anything effective. Inability to produce. We use impotent or impotent is you. The word impotent is used in relation to sexual activity. Amen. Inability to effectively perform. So the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible. It cannot be done. You cannot please God without faith. Amen. Number three. We cannot access God. We have no chance of contacting of fellowshipping. Amen. Of 
of, of, of having a relationship with God without faith. Because Hebrews 11 and verse 6 says again, He who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. The word belief or believe comes from the Greek word pistio and means to have faith. He who comes to God must have faith. Amen. You can't come to God without faith. We cannot come to God without faith. Number four, one cannot win Satan without faith. Amen. You not win your battle over the wicked one without faith. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you may be able to quench or to put out, to extinguish all, not just some, all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You need faith to win over the wicked one. Amen. Number five, to be healed. We need faith to be healed. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 9 verse 22, Jesus said to the, to the woman with the issue of blood who was healed, he, Jesus said to her, Thy faith has made thee whole. It wasn't the hem of Jesus' garment that made her whole. It was her faith. She believed that she touched the hem of his garment. She shall be made whole. Her faith made her whole. Jesus said to the two blind men, he says, according to your faith, be it unto you. They were healed because of their faith. Amen. According to your faith, not Jesus' faith, their faith. Number six, we need faith for daily living. You can't live for God. Without faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. From faith to faith. As it is written. The just shall live by faith. We can't live this walk. Live the, a successful Christian life without faith. How important is faith? To be righteous. You can't access righteousness without faith. Amen. Romans chapter 3 verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. So, Righteousness is a result of faith. Now, sometimes we confuse righteousness with holiness. Amen. Righteousness and holiness are not synonymous terms. Righteousness is accessed. When we gave our heart to Jesus, we became righteous. Amen. The very day we gave our heart to Jesus. We were made righteous. By virtue of our relationship with Jesus. So righteousness really means to be in right standing with God. To be right with God. So we are, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. By virtue of our relationship with Jesus. But holiness now is what we do on a daily basis. 
Amen. To, to keep ourselves free from, from the contamination of sin and maintain our separation and our oneness with God. Amen. It's what we do on a daily basis. Righteousness is what Jesus did for us. Holiness is what we do on a daily basis. Amen. Number eight. We can't be just without faith. Just means to be made as if we had, we had, we had, we had, we had, we had never sinned. Romans chapter 3 verse 28 says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith faith without the deeds of the law romans chapter 5 verse 1 therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ we need faith to be just amen to ensure to ensure victory over the world we need faith amen First John chapter 5 and verse 4. For what, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Hallelujah. So we need faith to overcome the world. Number 10. We need faith to access grace. Remember that I told you that everything that we receive from God comes through grace. God's favor. But in order for us to access God's favor, we must have faith. We need faith. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. We have access by faith into this grace wherewith we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Also, without faith, we cannot stand as children of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 13. Watch ye stand fast in faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Amen. 2 Corinthians 1 24. Nor not for that we have dominion over our faith. But are helpers of your joy. For by faith. Ye stand. Amen. For by faith ye stand. Stand in scripture. Stand in scripture means to stand. Amen. But it means it is a it gives you the picture of a confident stand. A stand with your chin up. Amen. Your chest out. Hallelujah. Confidence. Looking straight ahead. A confident stand. For by faith we stand. Also, we walk by faith. First, Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. How important is faith? Faith is extremely important. Amen. Also, our success in spiritual warfare is a result of faith. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witness. Amen. Ephesians 6.16 Above all, 
taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. Or success. In, you know, Christian, we talk much about spiritual warfare. But if we're serious about spiritual warfare, we will have to build our faith. Because we cannot win in spiritual warfare without faith. Amen. Hallelujah. And also, last of all, faith starts and end with Jesus. Amen. So to really stand in faith, walk in faith, live by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. We must have a relationship with Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endure the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Faith begins. Faith ends with God, with Jesus Christ, with our relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, last time we were, we did, I, I did Bible study, I shared with you, this is my personal belief as I prayed and prepared. I formed this belief. I believe that as we get closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the demand for faith in God will increase. I believe that. In fact, faith in God as a child of God, for the children of God, will become so much more important in these days. We will be presented, I think, with more and more challenges or challenging situations that will require faith in God Faith in God will require faith in God for deliverance or we will suffer the same fate with the rest of the world. God wants to make a difference. He wants to make a separation between the righteous and the unrighteous. Between the wicked and the righteous. In the world today. He wants to make a separation. Just like he did with Lot. In the time of Lot. In Sodom and Gomorrah. Just like he did in, with the children of Israel. In Egypt. He wants to make a separation. While there was plague in Egypt. There was peace and light. And joy. In Goshen. He wants to do it again. Amen. Christians, we are in a war. And I want you to know that. We are in a war. Amen. If we do not increase our faith, our fears will increase. I want to say that again. We are engaged in spiritual warfare. If we do not increase our faith, our fear, our fears will increase. More and more challenging situations. This time it is COVID-19. Next time it is something else. More and more challenging situations in our marriages, 
in our, in our homes, with our children, in our workplace, in our nation, in the nations of the world, more and more challenging situations. If we don't increase our faith, our fears will increase. Because you know what? Fear and faith are like two sides of one coin. If that coin is sitting on your desk or on your table, wherever it is, one side will manifest. Either your fear or your faith. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I think coming shortly and it is now upon us if the challenges not if, the challenges that will be experienced in the world will either reveal our faith or our fears. The challenges that will be experienced in the world will either reveal our fear or our faith. So, the choice is ours. Either Increase your faith or your fears will increase. Amen. And this is no joke. Children of God, power of faith. It's no joke. It is no joke. It is serious times. Now, the Bible tells us, and we conclude with this. Roman Revelation chapter 12. You see, we need to understand the times we are living in, you know. We need to understand the times we are living in. The devil knows the time. Romans chapter 12 verse 12. The Bible says, Re Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. And the sea. For the devil has come down to you. Having great wrath. Because he knows. That he has a short time. He knows. That he has a short time. Amen. Hallelujah. And he wants to do as much damage before his time is up. So we need to understand as children of God the time that we're in. Serious time. So I want to challenge you today, this evening. To make a concerted, a concerted effort each day to increase your faith. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Amen? Faith also comes by hearing directly from God. As we get in the word, this word gets into us. As we get in God's presence, God speaks to us. God wants to speak to his people. Amen. So, our faith is built when we get in God's word, when God speaks to us directly. Amen. Or, God speaks to us through his servants. So, 
There are different ways we can build our faith. I want to encourage you. Be serious about building your faith. You will need faith. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful for your word. Thank you for speaking to us. And I pray for all those who have listened, who have joined with us this evening in Bible study. I want to thank you, Lord God, that their lives will never be the same. I want to thank you, Lord, because of this time of Bible study, that, Lord, they'll become more serious about building their faith. Thank you, Father God, that you have helped each one to understand the importance of faith, to understand that, Lord, that they have a measure of faith, and to also understand that they are responsible for building that measure. Hallelujah. Understand that the faith is most important, one of the most important resources as given to us by God. So I want to thank you. Thank you for continuing to speak through me, using me to speak to your people. And I want to thank you, Lord, that as we have received your word, that we will not just be hearers of the word, but Lord, we will apply that word. And I thank you, Lord, that our lives will not be the same. So we bless you and thank you. And we praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into our Bible study tonight. Until we, until next week, God bless you and have a good evening.